So yeah, I'll do that. And I offered her either still photography or video. Oh, I'll be happy to do video. I said, very good. What was interesting about the reenactment was the fact that um, probably that she was willing to do it. Uh, it had only been a matter of a two or three days. And in this case, she's back on that bed. Uh, her husband has just been buried. And she's reenacting how it was that that gun went off and killed him. I think that the impression that was left uh, after watching the video was uh, uh, there was a coldness there. A coldness and a little inconsistency, too. Because I don't even know how it was in my hand. That, is, that part doesn't even, it, it doesn't even register. I don't know. Okay. The tape shows just uh, how, how she uh, did it and how she started realizing all of a sudden that the way she was describing it, the way she was telling them how it happened, that it wouldn't fit with the physical evidence, you know, because the angle of the shot would be entirely different. And, uh, and, and, and you can see in the tape when she realizes that and starts trying to move the detective who's playing Russ in the bed around so that she can, uh, uh, you know, try to make the angle work, but it never will work. The more the cops watched Barbara's performance in their reenactment, the more they thought she was lying. To get a warrant for her arrest, the cops are going to need more than just a video. Once again, they turned to Russ's ex-wife and best friend, Jo Lynn Ellen. They asked Jo Lynn to take what evidence, the physical evidence they had, and, uh, and go through it to see if they could find any motive that might have prompted her to do this. It didn't take long for Russ's best friend to give the cops what they were looking for. I came across this one check that was written to Barbara three days before Russ was killed, and it was to her for $1,500, and the check was out of sequence, and which seemed very strange to me. So I went to Ms. Steger and I said, do you have anything here with Russ's signature on it? She went and found several um, cards with his signature on it, and, and we noticed differences on the signature. They were very subtle, um, but, there, but there were differences. It turned out that this was a check that she had, you know, a check she had written to herself to cover other things, and she knew that this check would be coming back in Russ's cancel checks on February the 2nd. She knew that he would find out when this check came back that she was back up to the old spending and doing the whole thing all over again that, you know, that they had that been through before. So um, that's, that, that became the, the motivation right there. That and the fact that Barbara stood to gain over $100,000 from Russ's life insurance policy. Between the insurance policy, the forged checks, the video reenactment, and of course, the two dead husbands, Authorities felt they had enough evidence to warrant an indictment. On April 18th, 1988, Barbara Steger was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. News that a suburban wife and mother had just been arrested for the murder of her husband hit the well-to-do suburbanites of North Durham Farm. This was a big, big story in Durham, you know, I mean, this was huge. They just drew the media like a magnet, and, and they stayed with it from day one. With the media given the case of full court press, the state trial was moved to Lee County, 45 minutes from Durham. But moving the trial away from Durham didn't quell the media hype or the speculation about what the verdict would be. And despite all the circumstantial evidence that pointed to first-degree murder, Many folks around town believe